Belinda, or Ellie as she preferred to be called, was a truly special woman who was taken from us far too soon. A loving daughter, a caring mother, and a devoted wife. She liked the great outdoors, baking, crafts, interior design, reading, horses, and high performance cars. She loved life and especially loved helping other people, choosing a career in nursing and always going out of her way to look for people she could help. Ellie lived a difficult life, yet she was a survivor. Never one to look for sympathy, she didn't broadcast her troubles, so few people outside of her immediate family knew of her trials. I believe it does no harm to mention some of them now in order for you to better understand her. When I first met Ellie, she had been abused by every man she'd ever loved and cheated out of her entire net worth by her previous husband. She had had cancer three times, been in a coma twice, died once, broken nearly every bone in her body, was blind in one eye because of a botched routine surgery, and was terminally ill, to mention just a few. Yet she bore it all with a big smile on her beautiful face. She was always faithful. Her spirituality was on a level that was out of this world. And when things got difficult, she simply relied on her knowledge of the gospel and her faith in Jesus Christ, never doubting that Heavenly Father's will was being done and that all would be well in the end. Ever frugal and always wanting to give, Ellie chose a less expensive wedding gown than the one she had saved for, just so that she could assist more of my family in attending the wedding. I knew about her illness when I married her, so I wasn't going into it blind. And although Ellie was always determined that she would continue to live for a long time, realistically I only expected to have about three years with her in this life. Instead, we had nine. It wasn't always easy. We had our differences, and we had our fights. Sometimes I wonder how we made it through. But we did, and we became very close indeed. Ellie's health continued to deteriorate throughout our marriage, as more and more terminal illnesses were diagnosed, and more and more of her internal organs failed her. But that didn't stop her from smiling, nor from wanting to serve other people. She enthusiastically accepted every church calling offered to her, and magnified those callings to the very best of her ability. Finally accepting the calling of Compassionate Services Coordinator, only a few weeks before she passed, even when she was herself racked with pain all day and every day. One of the reasons for buying such a large house when we moved to Tennessee was that she wanted to foster children again. Alas, her disabilities became crippling and the hoped for miracle of recovery never came. In the past year or so, Ellie spent far too much time in hospitals and was constantly in pain. More pain than any human being should be allowed to endure. Yet she continued to smile and to serve me as her husband as much as she was able. As time went on, she was able to do less and less and I was called upon to do more and more for her. A few days before her birthday, when I asked her what she wanted, she simply said to be out of pain she received her birthday wish, being called home on her birthday. She is now free from pain for the first time in ages, and I am thankful for that, although the pain of losing her hurts more than I could ever have imagined. We will be together again one day, but I expect it to be a long and lonely road before then. While her work in this world is done, mine continues and I must now continue without her by my side. I will miss Ellie on so many levels, especially the fun side of her. The day before she passed, I renewed her disabled parking permit, which she never got to use. But as the city clerk handed me the permit, she told me it was good for any vehicle that Ellie rode in. So I took it to the funeral home to be hung in the hearse for her final road trip and I know she would have enjoyed the irony in that.
Ellie was laid to rest in the Oakwood Cemetery, Milan, Tennessee, on December 7, 2020, in a beautiful spot under a magnificent oak tree. She will always be in my heart. I would like to thank the people of the Repovo Lawrence Funeral Home for taking such special care of Ellie this past week, and her dialysis nurse Nick for going above and beyond the call of duty in looking after her through her final years. I also want to thank all of you for watching this video in celebration of Ellie's life and sharing one last special moment with her as her body is laid to rest and her spirit goes home to live once more with her Heavenly Father. Ellie, I love you and I miss you so much. Rest in peace until we meet again. Amen.